Just a quick rundown, demonstration or video on the Enerdrive DC to DC charger and the wiring harness that we um, build to go along with it. So it's a 40 to 50 amp programmable DC charger. So it's programmable anywhere from five to 50 amps. And the reason that's handy is because if you're starting with a smaller bank, you wouldn't want to pump 50 amps into like a single 100 amp hour battery. That would be too much. So we'd recommend derating it to say 25 amps. And then if you decide to build on that battery bank or get a larger battery bank later on, it's just a matter of programming this and allowing it to work at its peak, the 40 or 50 amps, and you can get the maximum charge out of a bigger battery bank. So that's the main reason why it is handy having the programmable one. So we're just gonna run through what's involved in the wiring harness and how to go about installing it in your vehicle. So it comes with a few accessories that may or may not be used, depending on if you're going in a canopy or if you're going in a camper van, caravan, that type of thing. Um, but it is designed to, the main cable to reach seven meters from the unit. So it's designed to reach this main start battery in a camper van or a canopy. So we'll start from the connections at the front of the charger here. So they're all labeled. We've got our battery input cable, our solar input, and our battery output. And we've also got this earth cable connected. So if the charger wasn't being mounted to the steel chassis of the vehicle or the canopy wall, um, it's recommended that we use this earth cable to link it to the battery input earth. And that earth's the case of the unit. So heading away from there, we've got, um, the first thing would be our Anderson plug right here. So this is to accept solar input into the unit. So it's a DC charger while you're driving along and it's also a solar controller while you're stopped. So that's labeled solar panel input. So any solar panel, if it was permanently mounted to the roof of the canopy would be fine. If it was portable um, in a blanket or a fold out panel, any unregulated solar can just be plugged straight into here and the unit will become the regulator. So the next thing down the line is our short battery harness. And it's labeled auxiliary battery. That's designed to go to the battery bank or a house battery bank that the unit is going to be charging. So it's best to have this unit mounted close to the battery that is charging. So in a canopy, you've got a 1.5 meter lead to reach down to wherever you mount the batteries. And this can be mounted on the back wall. Um, in a camper van, similar, you can mount it 1.5 meters away from the auxiliary battery. So that's the two small harnesses that it would be in the canopy. Then we've got our large harness, and this is 4 BNS cable, it's quite large cable. Um, and it's a 7 metre run to go all the way to our auxiliary battery. And included in the kit is this 32 mil cable gland. So if you were exiting the steel panel of a canopy, you could drill a 32 mil hole, thread this up the cable, and then be able to close this gland down so that it doesn't allow any moisture, dust, water to go into the canopy. So it'll be a watertight seal. So you can see there's a rubber seal in there that closes on the housing. And there's also a rubber seal in the back here that would go close down onto where you've drilled the hole through the aluminium. And then up at the front, same as in the back of the canopy is our battery connections. Once again, this one's labeled main battery, whereas that one is auxiliary. And it's just a matter of connecting negative to negative positive to positive on our main battery in the engine bay, and the same at the back on our auxiliary battery. There is one other, if your vehicle has a, what's called a variable voltage alternator, or commonly known as a smart alternator, there is this little wire included in the kit as well, marked ignition, which it's recommended that if you do have a vehicle with that alternator, and there is a list in the ad for this kit of vehicles that we know have them and vehicles that we know don't have them, um, but if you're unsure, you can feel free to contact us and we can see if your vehicle requires it or not. But any vehicle, the Toyota range is fine and any vehicle with a standard alternator doesn't require this wire connected. So if, if you do have a smart alternator, this wire should be connected to the ignition circuit of the vehicle to tell the unit that the vehicle is running. Alternatively, we do have a unit a device on our website called the Smart Ignition Sense that will just plug into there and make it plug and play still. Now, one thing that's added to the kit also, or comes with the end of drive, um, is the temperature probe. And the reason we don't have this wired into the harness is because it depends on what type of battery you have as to whether you require this. So if you're using this on a lithium setup, then you don't need the temperature probe. If you read the manual, 
standard driver manual it says to set the temperature to normal on the unit which is what it will be set to out of the box and to leave this disconnected so you wouldn't use that at all but if you're charging lead acid agm lead crystal then you'd want to plug this in and it simply plugs in via a phone jack style plug under this housing so you just remove that plug it in and then connect it to the negative terminal of the auxiliary battery but check the anti drive manual to see whether you require it and the rest of the kit is just accessories to aid in the installation so you've got a pack of cable ties there to cable tie the harness up and some mounting bolts to mount mount the unit itself and the fuse holders so that's a quick rundown on the anti drive dc to dc 40 to 50 amp universal dual battery charger